Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I'm finally going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried out in 2023 and there are 55 palettes in total. Now this list could have been a little bit bigger but unfortunately I have not gotten around to trying all of the palettes out that were released last year just yet. There are a couple of palettes that I have to exclude from today's ranking so I'm just going to be listing them up here. So just don't be surprised if you don't see them in today's ranking but just know I'm gonna still be posting looks with these palettes I'm still gonna be reviewing them so they are gonna be most likely included in my next ranking my next seasonal ranking if there is a palette where you do want to hear a little bit more of like you know a review on it I would highly suggest to head over to my four seasonal palette rankings that I do for each season here on my channel I'm gonna link the playlist at the end of my video and I'm also gonna put it in my description box down below but also if you do want to see looks with these palettes most of them are actually featured on my youtube shorts tab where I do one minute short videos where you can see the placement what colors I've used and you know the final look obviously as well obviously these palettes are just ranked for fun you know this is just solely based upon my preference in makeup my preference when it comes to a color story and a formula and if I have ranked something a little bit lower that you love look I'm gonna love it for you and I'm happy it's working out for you but I just might have a different experience with the palettes so I hope we can all agree that everyone is different when it comes to makeup preferences but also please do drop me a comment down below what was your favorite palette of 2023 I would be thrilled to know I'm really really intrigued and also in case you do enjoy today's ranking video why not give it a like subscribe and also ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming uploads and also just so you know I did not receive any of these palettes in PR I am not affiliated to any of the brands this video is not sponsored uh, you know I purchased all of this with my own money so I would say without no further ado let's just start at the bottom let's start with the worst palette of 2023 somebody has to take this spot unfortunately but this one I just you know I just really really don't like it and it's really just the worst palette I've tried this year and I don't think this was actually released in 2023 I think this was released at the end of 2022 so this is by Dips Beauty and this is the palm palette I have this in the colorway roses in hand there is also another colorway coffee in hand I think so this little palette it is so so overpriced unfortunately I just don't like this formula this has no color payoff this was uh, just so tedious to blend it was just such a tedious process to work with this palette to build it up there was no color payoff uh, the pigmentation is so sheer on this and these two shimmer shades did not do anything for me and I really expected some quality for the price point I'm gonna give this the last spot because it just does not deserve to be any higher up unfortunately so the next spot number 54 goes to another disappointment and this is by Pacifica Beauty and this is the purple nudes palette I just did not enjoy how this palette was performing the fact that this special shade was completely useless and it hard panned on me the second I dug in there and I just really did not like any of the looks that I came up with I felt like the shimmer formula was so lackluster also just blending these out just took such an effort to end up with kind of like kind of like a mediocre look at the end of the day you know this did not look very flattering on my eyes and it was just such a shame because I have tried out some other Pacifica beauty palettes like their larger palettes the animal spirit palette and also another one that I much prefer over this one I just feel like this was such a letdown and the quality here was really not there this just failed me in every way and I, I I really did not enjoy this one bit so number 53 in my ranking is also gonna go to another Pacifica beauty palette and this is the Coco nudes palette so both of these actually came out the exact same time those were released together I did enjoy this one just a little bit more however exact same problem exact same quality issue this special shade right here was completely useless I mean it immediately hard panned on me and then just the fact that all of these are mattes and the only shimmer that we've got is this lackluster deep brown shade I really truly love the color story though I just want to say 
these are kind of like my shades, like my comfort zone. I really do love brown. I love taupe. I also really enjoy purple. So the fact that I've ranked these so low just goes to show that the quality is just not existent. So let's move on to number 52 and that one goes to MUA Makeup Academy Metamorphosis eyeshadow palette. Now this is a brand from the UK and honestly I only spent seven quid on this. I thought this would be a beautiful pastel palette for the springtime. The only two really good shades in here are this shade Psyche which is kind of like a multi-chrome and I was really surprised that this brand could make such a good multi-chrome at that price range and also this shade was really pretty but the mattes they were so dusty it was so hard to build them up and some of these finishes did not make a lot of sense and like i feel like i'm gonna be a little bit more forgiving with this palette just because of the low price point but i don't think the quality is good and also this did not wear well like this was on my eyes for a couple of hours and then it completely disappeared so in that sense I would say like keep your seven quid and just spend it on something else like save thoughts something better than this because at the end of the day it's just not worth it okay and they actually do have a palette that is amazing and it's called illusionist it is so pretty i actually use that on my channel as well that one is a lot better in quality i don't know what happened with this one this was just such a letdown and so number 51 goes to lawless the lavender one you guys, I have tried out so many Lawless palettes, but at this point in time, I feel like after the Glam 1 palette, they just stopped with the quality of their palettes. I feel like their palettes are not performing as they used to. I felt like the mattes were okay, but also not my favorite formula in the world, but these shimmers. These shimmers were really where this brand kind of lost me because I know that they can do so much better and they had a couple of palettes where the shimmers performed so, so much better. These shimmers are so lackluster. I feel like the eyeshadow palette formula is not what it used to be. All right, the next palette, I feel like it's almost my fault for even picking this one up and this comes in at number 50 and this is by Colourpop, the Heavy Puddle Eyeshadow Palette. So this is the worst palette that I've tried out by Colourpop this year. The quality here was just not the Colourpop quality that I'm used to and I know that they can do a lot better. I felt like some of these shades were so lackluster all of these were super lackluster, like it was just so powdery. I did not like the formula, the creaminess and the butteriness that some of the Colourpop uh, eyeshadow palettes actually do have was definitely lacking from this palette. And I also felt like this deep shade was just too deep to work with the rest of the palette. The only shade that I ended up really loving was this one. This iridescent sort of periwinkle, lavender shade, it was just so beautiful. I don't think this is their best work. So unfortunately this had to rank a little bit lower. Okay, so let's move on. And number 49 is going to the Martin Cosmetics Nitro Speed Palette. Uh, unfortunately, I have to rank this one pretty low. I mean, there's gonna be a couple more palettes by this brand in my ranking, but honestly, much higher up because this was the one palette where I felt like the quality just was not really there. And I don't know, it's also this color story. It just did not work out for me. Again, this is very, very personal for us. This is such bulky packaging. I mean, it's huge, but this color story, it just did not look good on me. So I just felt like that these tones, it was just not it. And also this was so repetitive because most of these shimmers are actually pinks, like this one, this one, this one, this one. These satins, like this is one of these satins, this is one of these satins, this one. I mean, it just felt like these were so hard pressed. I just had such a hard time even picking them up. Also, this weird satiny bronzy shade is so out of place. I just did not like any of the looks that I've created with this palette, unfortunately. And I really thought that this would be a palette that I would love reaching for. The mattes are fine. It's not about the mattes. It's really about the satins and the shimmers being so lackluster and so hard pressed that I just felt like there is no point of me like trying to make this work. I just don't like it. So unfortunately I have to rank this one pretty low because I just did not enjoy using this one bit. All right, so number 48 goes to Glamlight Chucky palette. I really thought this would be a palette that I love because I love grays, I love cool tones. 
And I thought this had such a beautiful twist with the purples and some of these red tone shades. But all of these shimmers have a black base to them and they just looked so unflattering on my eyes. I felt like they really just enhanced my texture. And the only shimmer shade that worked for me somehow was this one. And that's kind of boring if that's the only shimmer shade that's gonna work. And all of these matte shades were so deep. And I thought maybe this one or this one would be a little bit lighter. Oh no, they are like mid-tones to deep tones. But I can see people loving this. I can see people making this work. You know, maybe if I'm gonna go to a rock concert or something, this palette might come in handy just in case if I'm like missing the shade in another palette. Maybe I can like combine this with something else by Glamlight. So I'm not gonna be planning on decluttering this necessarily, but the shimmer formula, I mean, I don't see myself reaching for the shimmers ever again. Okay, so coming in at number 47 is also a palette that was not released in 2023, but that came out at the end of 2022. However, I had tried this one out in the beginning, the very beginning of 2023. And that is the Vive Beauty the 90s palette. Ah, did I want to love this palette so, so much. Again, a little bit disappointed by the formula. The packaging is so gorgeous though. I just want to say this packaging is stunning. I love the fact that this is quite a large palette and oh my gosh, this color story is so up my alley. I'm not going to deny that. This is so beautiful, but the quality is just not there. All of these mattes were so powdery. They had so much kickback. This was just so powdery. My desk was full of pigment after I used this. And then these shimmer shades, kind of lackluster. The shimmers have a little bit more of a creamier, puttier texture, kind of the opposite of the mattes. I don't want to reach for it because this took me such a bloody long time to actually create a look with it. Like this just did not do it for me. And although sometimes, you know, I wish I would love this more because I really do enjoy this color story. This formula is just not my cup of tea. But I can see that this was inspired by the 90s and I do love the idea, I do love the concept, I do love the packaging. But unfortunately, I never really want to reach for this palette because the quality is just not existent for me. So let's actually move on with number 46. And this is another palette by Colourpop. It's the Aurora Struck palette. I love the theming. I love this color story, you guys. This color story, oh my god. It just looks so beautiful this looks completely up my alley and i really wanted to love this palette however i felt like the quality of this ColourPop palette in particular was just a little bit it just wasn't great okay it was kind of like disappointing all of the deeper matte shades were so powdery and i was really disappointed by this cosmic ray shade because this is one of my all-time favorite sort of shifty shades, like one of these grays with a red base. I love those. I just felt like this was lacking in intensity. So the color payoff was just not great on some of these shimmers. However, there are a couple of shades that I do love in this palette. I mean, I love this one right here. This shade is so beautiful. This one is also so, so stunning. I just felt like this wasn't the best color pop quality ever. And I was so disappointed at the end of the day. So, you know, this really wasn't one of the palettes that I would recommend, although I love this color story. So let's move on to number five. And number five is gonna go to Nomad Cosmetics Royal Europe palette. This palette leans pretty, again, mid-toned to deep. And I felt like these three shades in particular, they all pulled the exact same color on my eye, they all pulled like hot pink on my eye. I had an issue in terms of the quality with this multi-chrome because all of these are like these jewel toned multi-chromes here. And this purple was so patchy on my eyelids. It did not want to work. I know that this was Nomad Cosmetics very first go at actually creating um, a multi-chrome formula. It's not the best multi-chrome formula I've ever tried. I feel like these were so thin and I really had to spray my brush. I had to build them up like crazy. And it's just not my favorite multi-chrome formula. And this is also not an inexpensive palette. And I feel like there are just better palettes on the market. So unfortunately, compared to everything else that's gonna come up, this just fell a little bit flat. So for the life of me, I cannot rank this up higher than that. So number 44 is going to the Lethal Cosmetics Midnight Serenade palette. The color story is actually pretty. I really enjoyed the color story. When this was released, I thought, oh my gosh, this looks so stunning. I really want to try this out. I want to give this one 
ago. The special shades in here, the duochromes, the multichromes have an amazing formula. However, the metallics and especially the matte formula is just not up my alley. I feel like these are so powdery, they don't have enough grip and they also don't layer very well. There are four amazing shades in this. This one, this one, this one and this one. But if only four shades work out for me so well, I don't know if I would honestly want to recommend the palette because I don't feel like you should spend that amount of money just to end up with a palette where you're only gonna love four shades. Let's move on to number 43 in the ranking. So this is Schwab Cosmetics Moonfall palette. These foiled metallic shades, such an amazing formula. But the mattes? No. They were strangely chalky and it was very hard to layer them. It was just hard to work with this color story in general. Although I did create some stunning looks with this palette, I just did not enjoy the process of building these matte shades up. So number 42 goes to a brand that is actually no longer in business but are featured on my channel for a long 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 time and this is by Aether Beauty. This is their manifest palette and when they closed their doors unfortunately last year I did a palette ranking of all of their releases just for fun. I did enjoy the looks that I did with this palette, but I would not say that it's like the worst palette and I also would not say it's like the best palette on planet Earth. I don't know. It was just like a color story thing here. I wanted to love this, but then at the end of the day, I did not really enjoy it that much. And unfortunately, Aether Beauty is no longer. I'm still sad about that. And number 41 in the ranking is going to go to LH Cosmetics Aim Higher Palette. This is, again, such a beautiful color story. I mean, I love taupe. I love these steel blues. And I thought when I got this, I would love this. Then unfortunately, I realized that this is not exactly the best formula on planet Earth. I felt like, you know, these mattes were just a little bit harder to blend out, to build up. It took me a long time to create a look. And at the end of the day, the variety in this palette, unfortunately, is not like that existent because I thought this would be like a yellow, like I love yellow shimmer. And I thought this would be a beautiful yellow shimmer. Turns out this is an iridescent periwinkle. It's just so bizarre. It had a little bit, a slight like shimmer, an accent of a little bit of yellow. But the way this looks in the pan was so deceiving. And then also I felt like this was a little bit overpriced. It's not the best, not the worst, but for the life of me, I could not rank this up any higher. Although I love this color story, but you're going to see a color story that is very, very similar that I ranked much much higher up. So let's move on to number 40 and number 40 is gonna go to the Beauty Bay Metamorphic palette. This is not necessarily a bad palette but compared to everything else I just had to rank this a little bit lower. Also I just don't like this packaging. This packaging is so inconvenient. It's just opening up like that. Like why? This is just not it's just silly to hold. So I'm just gonna fold it backwards. Now, my issue with this palette was the fact that it was a little bit too repetitive and I did not enjoy this matte formula. I just felt like when I use these shades, although it looks like it gives you the impression that there is some depth, now don't be fooled. Th these are just mid-tones. If this would have been an all shimmer palette, I would have respected this a lot more because the shimmers in this are quite Stunning. All in all, I think it's a pretty color story, but yeah, in terms of execution, this mirror is just so annoying. Let's just close it and um, yeah, let's. Oh no. Yeah, see what I mean? Oh, now it's not gonna shut. I have to put it in between a couple of other palettes now. So let's move on to number 39. So number 39 is gonna go to Adapt Cosmetics La Cienega palette. Now this is a stunning palette. I have to say this is beautiful. I mean, this color story is like neutrals uh, meeting some insanely pretty... Some of them are multi-chromes, some of them are duochromes, and some of them are just very intense shimmers. The only reason why I ranked this one a little bit lower is the fact that this formula is just not my all-time favorite formula in the world. I feel like the mattes are just not that great and I actually purchased this palette in particular because I wanted to try out the mattes and I wanted something that was a little bit more matte heavy because all of the palettes are just lacking in the variety of the matte shades. I feel like there are never enough matte shades in their palettes. Usually they are very shimmer heavy and with this the mattes were just 
mm, not that great. It took me a long time to make these work. The shimmer formula is okay. It's not my very favorite one because I feel like it is very putty. So use a glitter glue and also pick them up with your finger if you can. The glitter particles, like the shimmer particles, in this formula are not that finely milled. So I was almost like, it was almost like a gritty sensation. It was almost like sharp to the touch. And I just don't really like that. I like my shimmer formula to be a little bit smoother. I mean, you can put in a lot of sparkles. I don't mind that, but I don't want to feel them. This shade Manhattan Beach and this one, Santa Monica Boulevard. Wow, I love the looks that I've created. But again, it just was a little bit more of a time consuming experience. And the matte formula is just not my favorite one, to be honest with you. So that's why I ranked it just a little bit lower. But I feel like from now on, I'm just being very, very nitpicky when I'm saying something like that, <laughs> because the quality of these palettes are actually beautiful. It's just, you know, more of a preference thing at the end of the day, but I had to rank these palettes somehow. And this wasn't easy, believe me. 38, that one is gonna go to Odin's Eye Flora Story. Now this was a collaboration with influencers that Odin's Eye did earlier in 2023, the Perfect World Collection. And this was one of the uh, palettes that was released with Makeup Just For Fun, Amanda. This was her color story. I honestly think this is a very, pretty color story. However, there are a couple of like just minor things about this palette that, you know, just make me not want to reach for this a ton. And that is basically the shade is super chalky. Like this deep sagey olivey shade just does not look that great on me. This type of color is just something that I don't really enjoy working with that much. Also, this was just pulling a little bit too hot pink for my liking. And then the teal shade, I kind of felt like this was a little bit out of place. However, I love this shade right here. I love this shade, I love this shade, I love this shade, I love this, and I love this. So there are definitely some pros and some cons. The formula is really solid. The only thing I will say is that this one is just a little bit chalkier. The shimmers are beautiful, just use a glitter glue because there is a lot of fallout otherwise with these palettes in particular. Yeah, I think this is pretty, but it's not 100% my favorite color story in the world. Let's just put it that way. All right, so let's move on to number 37. And this is by Unearthly Cosmetics. This is the Dad of Night palette. Now, this color story, again, it's more of like a deeper sort of color story. We have like a color story that includes some pinks, some lilacs, some grays. A little bit of blue and some greens. Look, I like this palette. I really think it is really pretty, but in general I feel like this palette leans a little bit too deep. Although we do have the inclusion of this shade and this shade, but again this is quite a mid-tone shade and this one too. It gives you the illusion that it's a little bit lighter than it actually is. Now I did enjoy the looks that I've created with this palette, you know, but Compared to everything else, I just felt like this was the spot that it deserved. Also, because I felt like this one, it was a little bit too hard pressed. I'm not going to reach for this over my other ones. And this is number 36, and I'm going to give it to the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Forget Me Not palette. This is actually a face and eye palette. You can use it on your face to do some contouring. You can also use it on your eyes. Um, I feel like this is really good if you're a makeup artist and I really did enjoy using this shade as a contouring shade. It worked so well. I also did a very pretty neutral look with this palette. The only thing that I don't like is the fact that she included like these four highlighting shades. These highlighters are so putty. Like if I use my rather fluffy highlighting brush that I like to use to apply my highlighter, it's just not going to show up. And if I use my finger, it's too much. And if I use these on my lids, I feel like it's not enough. <laughs> so I felt like I used this shade, this shade, and this shade, and I did not see like a lot of variety. Me personally, I love using these shades as a companion palette to my other Blend Buddy palettes. And I don't like this book situation, unless it's a smaller palette, but such a large palette with this kind of system. Number 35 in my ranking, and that one is gonna go to Fantasy Cosmetica, and this is the fighter palette. This color story really is like warm shades meeting cool tone shades. And usually I like it, but I don't like it every time. Especially because this mustardy yellow, it just did not look very flattering on my eyes. I wish this could have been something else, you know, at the end of the day, they are a little bit too similar. And I felt like the matte formula here, 
not my all-time favorite one. With this, I really had to build up the pigmentation. This was a little bit sheerer than my other palette and I really had to make an effort to blend these out. That's just my two cents on that. Although I love this palette, you know, apart from the mattes not being 100% up my alley, this is a beautiful one. And from here on now, you know, it's the quality of these palettes is actually really, really good. All right, so let's actually move on to number 34 in the ranking. And I'm gonna give that one to Odin's Eye Snow Dream Palette. This was part of their holiday release for 2023, the Christmas season, as you can tell, by this cute Frosty the Snowman packaging. <laughs> the only reason why I ended up not loving this 100% was the fact that although you may assume that this is a deeper shade, this is honestly just a mid-toned cinnamon sort of warm brown shade and I wish they could have included a deeper brown. It's actually in the Hey Reindeer palette where they included this, but I don't want to purchase two palettes just to have a deeper shade. I feel like a palette has to work as a standalone palette. So the fact that they decided to include four different pastels, like this one, this one, this one, and this one, it just bothered me a little bit. I also was looking forward for this beautiful sort of holographic shade. However, I felt like the formula on this wasn't that great. It really gave me a little bit more of a headache to actually combine these shades all together. But it, nonetheless, it's good quality, but yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it's not my favorite palette of all time, you know. Let's move on to the next one, and this one is number 33, and that one is gonna go to Glaminatrix Cosmetics Into the Night. I don't know if this is still available as of right now. This might have been a limited edition palette. Maybe you can get these still as singles. I love the shimmer formula. The shimmer's stunning, apart from this one. I mean, it's a hot pink, what you want. I don't like hot pink. These two shades, I really don't need them in my life. I love this one. This On The Rocks shade, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful, I love it. Also love this silver, the silver is like intense. The mattes on the other side were a little bit too sheer for my liking. I am glad that they have actually changed their formula and now it's a little bit more of a pigmented formula. Sometimes I did not know how to combine this palette, so it's a fun color story, however, I feel like it's challenging at the same time. And number 32 is going to go to Cosmic Brushes Delicious Delights palette. I really love the color story. My only critique would be that I wish that they would have included a little bit more depth in this palette. The deepest shade is this shade and it's a purple. I'm glad that they chose it to be a purple because usually a purple is the one shade that will work with all of the other shades to deepen up, you know, your color. Some of the shimmers I felt like were a little bit more lackluster, like this one. I wish this could have been a little bit more punchy. This one too, but then the shade Frosting is so insanely gorgeous. This is my favorite shade of the entire palette. There is also an insane multi-chrome shade in here. Although it's not my favorite shift in the world, it's still very, very pretty. I think this is fun. This is beautiful quality. And number 31 is gonna go to Martin Cosmetics Mula express palette or is it called mula palette this looks like a gigantic credit card i really enjoyed the color story although this was released in the springtime i felt like this really is a fall time color story some of the shimmers like this one and maybe this one were a little bit too oppressed also maybe this one the rest just very beautiful, buttery, creamy shimmer formula. This is a very beginner-friendly eyeshadow palette. I've created some beautiful, stunning looks with this. I think this is the best quality of formulation that Martin Cosmetics has ever released. And it's also the best packaging because this was a little bit more of a slimmer sort of release. I really do enjoy it. There's nothing like necessarily wrong with it. It's just also a little bit pricier. I think this is pretty though. Might be a little bit too repetitive with these like golden shades but again there is enough variety to kind of like justify their existence so I really do enjoy this palette quite a lot so let's move on to number 30 and number 30 is gonna go to the unearthly cosmetics spaced out palette this was such a fun summer collection release this was the smaller mystery box that you got and you can actually create some very cohesive looks with this this shade shroom is where it's at this is so so beautiful it was just a little bit harder to make this 
deeper shade work 100% with these lighter shades with the blue. I did not have an issue at all. I mean, I did enjoy this smaller palette for what it actually is. And I had a lot of fun with this one. So there's not that much to critique about it at all. Moving on to number 29. And that one is gonna go to Wicked Widow Beauty at with Scissor Hand 2 palette. Very, very pretty. I just feel like at the end of the day, I did not really need this mustardy shade right here. I felt like this was very unflattering on me. The only reason why this is like, you know, ranking just a little bit lower, although I think 29 is still really, really good in my ranking, I just felt like my main issue with this palette was the fact that this stained my brushes to a point of no return. I've got a brush that is forever stained teal because of this palette and that is something that I just didn't appreciate that much. I mean, this is a beautiful formula, don't get me wrong. These mattes are amazing, they are buttery, they are smooth, they barely have any kickback, they build up so, so well, and the shimmer formula is stunning. It just annoyed me a little bit that my brush was stained forever. So number 28 is gonna go to the Welcome Foolish Mortals palette by Colourpop. This is my favorite Colourpop palette that was released last year. It has a couple of flaws, but nothing major. I felt like this was not like needed necessarily. I mean, we have this amazing white shimmer shade right here. This could have been something different. I really like the color story though. I feel like this is like cool toned neutrals, like cool tone grayish, some rosiness in here. And then we have these two pops of color. I felt like the quality and the formula here was ColourPop at its best. And I really enjoy the quality. I love the color story, but again, just has some minor flaws to it, but all in all, such a beautiful, amazing palette. So number 27 is gonna go to Mika Beauty Shop in collaboration with Martis Makeup, and this is the Serpent palette. All in all, I felt like this was a beautiful formula, especially the shimmer shades. The shade Venom is out of this world amazing. This is so stunning. Another shade that I love is the shade Duality. Ooh, what an insanely beautiful shade. This is this one and Venom might be my favorite shades on the palette. I feel like these two at the end of the day might just be a little bit too similar. In general, what I did not like 100% about this formula was the matte formula. I feel like the matte formula was very sheer and I had to put in a lot of time and effort to actually build this palette up. It's not a big issue because it was buildable and I love the looks that I've created with this. All right, so let's move on to number 26 and number 26 is gonna go to the Martin Cosmetics Mission Triple X palette. I don't think this was released in 2023. I think this must have been a late 2022 release. I love this like sci-fi sort of theming and I love this color story. This is my favorite color story by Martin Cosmetics. This is good. This is amazing if you are a beginner in makeup. I love this beautiful like cool tone color story where the cool tones are are meeting some pops of color, some pops of green, a uh, yellow. I mean, we have this insanely beautiful, uh, this is almost like a baby rose with like some green shift to it. But I also feel like this would have benefited a little bit from a deeper green in here, you know? I mean, it's okay with the black, but I just wish there was a little bit more of a deeper green shade in this palette. And I just enjoyed all of the looks. I love these grays. And I mean, I love grays and these pops of like colors. I really do enjoy that. If you want something warmer with greens, I would say go with the Moolah palette. But if you like a little bit more of a cool tone color story, go with this one, so pretty. All right, so number 25 is gonna go to Odin's Eye Stone and Rock palette. This, the Stone and Rock palette has this grungy, sort of swampy green color story. I really did enjoy the quality. I did enjoy the looks that I've created with this. The only reason why I ranked this one a little bit lower, I felt like this shade right here was just looking so ugly on me. This was too swampy for me, you know? Sometimes some of these olive toned shades are just not my favorite ones. And this one and this one in particular, did not enjoy it that much. It pulled a little bit too swampy mustardy on me. And I, mm, this wasn't my favorite sort of look that I've created. It's not my favorite one in the world, but again, this formula is very pretty. And I mean, I like this palette enough, you know, it's very, very stunning, has a great formula. I did some fun looks with this, especially with this shade right here. And also with this beautiful sort of deep gray shade. I just did such a beautiful combination with this and that. So stunning. I really did enjoy the looks. I just did not like the look that I did with these swampier shades. So let's move on to number 24. And that one is gonna go to Beauty Bay Retro Love. This is an all pastel palette. 
but just done right. This is very, very pretty. Again, I could have done without this hot pink shade. I mean, I get why they are putting this in this palette. This palette was inspired by the 60s. I love the looks that I've created with this. I think this is amazing quality for the price point. I reached for this a ton and I feel like what I love about this palette is the fact that we have like a very light shade here. We have these beautiful pastel tones, but we also have some mid-tones and we have some deeper shades. We have this and this shade. And I think just the harmony and the ratio of the color story is beautiful. This is such a good palette considering the price point. I had a ton of fun with this and I barely have anything negative to say. Again, from this point onwards, it's just going to be very, very difficult to find any major critique points. So number 23 is going to go to Simply Posh Genuine Gems palette. I don't know if this was actually released in 2023 or if this was also released at the end of 2022, but this is such a fun, fun, fun color story. Honestly, it's just like a rainbow palette done right. This is so colorful, so exciting. These shimmer shades, this shade rare. I don't have a shade like that in my entire collection. This was so unique. This matte formula is so beginner friendly. It's so buttery. It's so creamy. It blends out like a dream. It is one of my all time favorite like matte formulas in the world. I just feel like Again, this might not be everyone's like cup of tea because it is quite punchy, it is quite vibrant, but I love it. If I want to have fun, if I want to play around with a colorful palette, I think this is one of the best options out there and I really did enjoy it. Number 22 is going to go to an all shimmer palette and it's the only all shimmer palette that I felt like I wanted to still include in today's ranking and this one is by Sugar Drizzle. It's the Don't Forget to Smile palette. What a gorgeous color story for the springtime. I don't have anything negative to say about this palette whatsoever, apart from the fact that it's an all shimmer palette. So there are no mattes in here. I always prefer if, you know, a palette comes with mattes. Nonetheless, this is so stunning. This is just the shimmer formula is amazing. I love this shade. This is my favorite shade. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the different textures. I love how these like work on your eyes. They are so easy to use. This looked beautiful on my eyes. I just really, really love it. All right. And number 21 is going to go to Odin's Eye Sea Talk palette. This is the other palette that was part of the Perfect World collection that Odin's Eye had released in collaboration with a couple of influencers. And this is by Lauren May Beauty. This is my favorite one out of this Perfect World collection. I mean, I did not pick up the Betty Bean one because I just did not vibe with the color story in the first place. But this is so elegant. This is so well done. Now, this has a ratio of just three mattes and the rest are all like shimmer shades with different textures. There is a topper, there is a metallic shade right here. And then there are these intense sort of like glittery shades where I would recommend use a glitter glue if you do want to avoid the crazy fallout. But I love the fact that she has created a palette with like these taupey shades, these bronzy shades, and then these beautiful sort of like blues. Like I just love the looks that I created with this palette. Let's uh, move on to my top 20. All right, so my number 20 is gonna go to Unearthly Cosmetics Resurgence palette. This is actually a collaboration with Heather Austin. Wow, I mean, this color story, it's not for the faint-hearted, but it's almost perfect. And I would have ranked this a lot higher if this pink, this hot pink could have been a yellow. Although it might look intimidating, the fun thing about this is that you can actually, if you mix this red with the blue, you're gonna get a purple. If it was a yellow, I could have like literally mixed this in with this red and actually get a proper red. Because what happens is when I'm applying this red, my skin, my eyelids are a little bit more on the cool tone side this red turns completely hot pink on me. My problem is maybe also a little bit more unique that this turns completely hot pink on me. It's such a shame. I wish it would not do that, but it's not the only brand where this happens to me, but where a red is turning completely hot pink. But everything else, these shimmers are insane. Some of my favorite shimmers of this year. The shade transformation, get out. The shift on this is unreal. Then the shade creation, one of my favorite shades of all time. Again, I love just like silvery blue, with a red base. I just love, love, love the shimmer shades. All of them are stunning. I also really love the shade Life. It works 
so well as an inner corner highlight. Sometimes I'm even reaching for this palette because of this shade. I love these shimmers so, so, so much. Again, I just wish that this could have been a primary yellow. That would have saved the palette, really, <laughs> in my opinion. But nonetheless, this is so beautiful. And then number 19 is going to go to Gourmand Girls haunted palette. I mean, it's a fun color story. Let's start off with that, you know. I just want to say I really love most of the shades a lot. I just felt like this yellow and this orange, they're just a little bit too similar for my liking. And also another thing, again, as I said throughout the video, I'm not the biggest fan of these swampy, olivey tones. They don't look 100% flattering on my eyes. I really do love the quality. I love this shade right here. This shade is insanely beautiful. It's just these olive greens that make it like rank a little bit lower. Again, I gotta be so nitpicky right here, but I love the quality. This is one of my favorite formulas in the world. And number 18 is gonna go to Glamlight Ghost Face Palette. Ooh, this beautiful screen palette. I mean, when I saw this color story, I was like, oh gosh, I'm gonna love this. I mean, this is just me in a nutshell. I love a good cool tone palette. I really, really enjoyed this palette. The only thing I did not enjoy that much is the fact, you know, that we have again these sequin shades right here. I mean, I really did not need this. I also did not need this shade necessarily. I mean, I get it, but I just wish there could have been like a different pop of color in here. I love the formula though. I love creating looks with this. This was something that I truly enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with this palette. Number 17 is gonna go to Simply Posh Cozy Cabin Palette. This pulled so vibrant on my eyes, so it gave me a little bit of a shock factor and I did not expect that because I thought this would be a little bit more neutral. Oh no, it's not. All of these shimmer shades are fantastic. They all have a shift to them. They are either duochromes or even multi-chromes. I mean, this is such a good, good formula. This is very warm toned though. I mean, although you have a little bit of lilac here and a little bit of like the blue, this lilac unfortunately turned very blue on me. And this was so easy to use. This literally blended out like butter. This matte formula is so top notch. So let's move on to number 16. And this is by Blend Bunny Cosmetics. It's the Lure palette. You know, there's another Blend Bunny palette coming up that I prefer just a little bit more. In general, it's also just because of this row of like these hot pinks. I mean, not the biggest fan. This multi-chrome is so unique, so stunning. I love this row in particular. I also love the greens and I love the blues in this. Although I love it, I love the quality. I think this is beautiful. The palettes that are gonna follow, I just prefer them a little bit more. So number 15 is gonna go to Artitude Cosmetics Man Eater Palette. This was unexpected, but I love this tropical jungle like color story this is such good quality i really did enjoy this so so much i love the looks that i've created with this such a fun palette and i did reach for this a lot in my everyday life especially during the summertime i felt very compelled to using this when it was hot outside i don't know why these mats are so easy to build up to blend out i felt like this was really good quality I love everything about this, you know, what can I say? The only thing that I might have to critique is that this shade and this shade are a little bit too similar, but this is me being very, very nitpicky. This palette is so much fun. Love the looks that I've created with this. So number 14 is gonna go to Unearthly Cosmetics Devour palette. I love this palette. I don't even know. I have nothing negative to say about this palette. It's like this beautiful green meets some burgundy, purpley, teal shades with this gruesome shade right here. I mean, this is so beautiful. These two shades especially, these are some insanely beautiful multi-chromes. I love the looks that I've created with this. It is top-notch quality and I, I, I don't have anything else to say. It's just so good. Let's actually move on to number 13. And number 13 is gonna go to Glaminatrix Cosmetics Sugar and Spice Palette. I love this combination of neutrals with these pops of pastels with these insanely stunning shimmer shades. My only critique with this is I did not need these two lighter shades. I wish they could have included like a neutral mid-toned brown. That would have made this palette like rank even higher. I think this brand has really stepped up their matte formula. However, they are a little bit more on the drier side. So they are gonna give you a little bit of kickback. But with this formula, it does not bother me at all because I feel like these still blend out amazingly. I ended up loving this a lot more than I initially thought I would. On number 12, this is the Gloss Gods First Girl on Jupiter palette. This color story is a cool tones lover's dream. And 
these shimmers, they are so like sparkly, so beautiful. Really, they are beautiful. There's also a duochrome in here. This is also a duochrome. And here we have more of a holographic sort of glitter formula. Now this one and this one are sort of like glitters, but I love them because they have a base. I love this formula, the matte formula, creamy, buttery, a little bit of like kickback in the pan, but none of that translates to the eyes. And then the shimmers are so smooth. I always pick them up with my finger, especially these two. Use a glitter glue and you'll be on the safe side. This just speaks to the cool tone lover within me, to the taupey lover. I love taupe. And it was literally shooting up right to spot 12. Well deserved. I really, really love it. Number 11 goes to Nomad Cosmetics Ghost Town USA. It is just, again, a cool toned lover's dream. And if you do like to combine cool tones with a little bit more of like rusty shimmers like these coppery tones right here and then these like antique golden shades this is beautiful this is no matte cosmetics at its best these are so buttery and creamy and blendable i feel like they really stepped it up especially with their shimmer formula you know this shimmer formula is so beautiful maybe there could have been a little bit of a lighter shade but to be honest in this palette in particular it does not bother me as much as in some of the other palettes where I mentioned the exact same thing. I really think this was such a fun release and the theming and the concept of this so fun. I love it. But let's move on to my number 10. I am exhausted. I actually need a sip of my energy drink. But I made my mind up and I think these are the top palettes of 2023. Number 10 is gonna go to the Bella Beauty Bar Smoky Glam Palette, to this gigantic beautiful palette. Although it's like a bigger palette, I know a lot of people had an issue with that. I don't. Like give me all of the selection that I want, you know. This one could have like ranked even higher up if not all of these gray tones would literally pull the exact same shade on my eye. This is such a beautiful sort of like romantic palette. I could see myself using this during the festive season, during the holiday season. I could see myself using this, you know, for a night out and also for the springtime. Like these beautiful muted pink shades. This is so hard to find and I'm so glad we did not get a hot pink in this because they could have easily done that. But these are so dusty, so muted, exactly what I love. And there are also a couple of special shades in here that have such a beautiful shift. I love their mattes. Their mattes blend out like a dream. The shimmers are just beautiful. Like, what can I say? I really enjoyed interacting with this palette and this is a well-deserved top 10 spot. And then number nine is gonna go to Unearthly Cosmetics Sorceress Smoke Palette. What can I say? This is a grungy dream. And although this is a little bit more on the neutral side for Unearthly Cosmetics, and it's still a little bit swampy, but like I said, it's swampy yet pretty. And I just love these shimmers. I love the layout of this palette. I love that we have an equal ratio of mattes and shimmer shades. I love the looks I've created with this. I love combining this purple with this green. And although it leans a little bit warmer, I feel like this is something that I love reaching for in my everyday life. I just love what this palette gives me. It is absolutely stunning and I think the quality here is top notch. And then number eight is gonna go to another Gourmand Girls palette and this is the Silent Night palette. Oh, this is a little bit new in my collection, but man, did I love this. I actually wore this over the Christmas days last year. The quality in this palette is absolutely outrageously amazing. I love these like really like toasty browns combined with the gold and honestly the shade piece might be my all-time favorite shade, one of my all-time favorite shades of the year. But it's definitely one of the shades that I can see myself reaching for over and over again. And I love combining this with this beautiful, grayy, taupey, purplish shade right here. The only thing I've got to critique a little bit is the fact that we have these two very deep blues. I seriously wish this could have been like maybe like a very light blue. That could have been a little bit different. Also, the two blue shimmers, if that would have been a taupey brown shimmer, this would have maybe been my favorite palette of the year. All right, and number seven is gonna go to Fantasy Cosmetica, the Rogue palette. The quality of this is top notch. I love the color story. I love all of the looks that I've created with this palette. These stunning cool tones, this muted sort of green, this beautiful lilac shade, and then this beautiful minty blue. Oh, so beautiful. These mattes are incredible. Also, this is the best black matte shade I have in my entire eyeshadow collection. This was the easiest to work with. This was like butter to blend out. 
I love it. I also just love the shimmer shades. This one, Sneak Attack, one of my favorite shades of all time and Trickster, unlike anything I've ever seen. And I just love this palette for what it is. It is so beautiful. I love reaching for this. And these special shades, these shimmer shades are so incredible. Okay, so let's move on to number six. And this is by Odin's Eye. This is the Jewels and Jam palette. This is like a perfectly beautiful, yet special, sort of romantic, cool toned color story. Oh, I love this. This is just one of these palettes that I did not want to put down anymore. This is just such a dream palette for me personally. This is so beautiful. I love this. I also love this special shade right here. Not the biggest fan of this black base purple shade. I just felt like this is one of the best like color stories that Odin's Eye has ever done. It might be honestly my personal favorite one. I think this is so beautifully muted yet it just makes so much sense. The harmony of this palette is really where it's at and I just love this. This is so cute. So let's move on to my top five. So number five goes to Unearthly Cosmetics. This is the Don't Be Jelly palette. I mean this one is definitely not for the faint-hearted ones and in the beginning I was super intimidated when I saw this color story but man is this stunning. I had so much fun with this palette and that was also one of the main criteria is how much they actually got my creative juices flowing. And I felt like this was a challenge at first when I looked at it the very first time. But once I used this, I was like, okay, I'm in. And all of the looks I've done with this palette turn out to be beautiful. Now, again, we have five mattes and seven shimmer shades. But out of these shimmer shades, there are some very beautiful multi-crumbs here. This shade, Luminescence, this is like one of the best multi-crumbs I've ever used. And Hyperspace, beautiful. One of the best qualities that they have ever done. I just love this palette, man. This has to be in my top five. It's amazing. And so the number four spot is gonna go to Cosmic Brushes Muse Palette. I love this palette. This is great quality. And the price point of this was also not that much. The harmony in this color story is really where it's at. I love the quality. The shimmer shades are so beautiful. We have a couple of very special shades here antique and ambient and I have reached for this antique shade so much like honestly I feel like this palette was almost inspired by like a flower bouquet like a beautiful assortment of different flowers I just think this is so pretty it is stunning for the fall time it's stunning for the springtime especially you have so much variety in this you could use this for any season and i mean this is always sold out what can i say it just speaks for itself it's something i enjoy reaching for ever since i got it and that just says a lot so i really love this but all right my top three so number three <laughs> it's gonna go to a Blend Bunny Cosmetics, this is the Sugar and Grunge palette. In the beginning, I did not think it would make it to my top three. What I truly love about this is that this is inspired by the 90s. And I'm a 90s child. So when I'm reading all of these different shade names, I get a flashback. And it's very nostalgic for me personally, but also just the looks that I can create with this palette. Just combining this green with the gray. And then I did one of the most stunning neutral looks of my life with these shades right here and I combined it I think with bubblegum or with this and a little bit with a pop of blue, brown and blue, so 90s. I still love that combination. I just love this matte formula. Blend Bunny does one of my all-time favorite matte formulas in the world. Now this does not have any like really special shimmers but these shimmers are just freaking gorgeous on the eye. I feel like the shimmer shades just pull very bright, very light, and I love that. This was also one of my most used palettes. And honestly, I even used this palette for New Year's Eve, and I did not think that I would love this as much as I ended up doing. And it just deserves to be in the top three, because this is amazing. So my number two is gonna go to the What's Up Beauty Dragon Eye Palette. I mean, this is one of my favorite palettes that were released last year. The color story is so special because we have neutrals that kind of like meet these insanely gorgeous shimmer shades. Some of them are multi-chromes, some of them have just such beautiful shifts and I've just got to say I love this matte formula. This matte formula, creamy, buttery, builds up like a dream, blends out like a dream, top-notch, top-notch quality and I also just love these shimmers. Like these shimmers are 
spectacular, especially that shade Magic. That shade Magic is like one of my all-time favorite shades and it kind of almost reminds me of the shade Trickster in the Rogue palette by Fantasy Cosmetica. And I've got compliments when I wore this palette and I just think this is so well curated in terms of the color story. I think this is a grandiose release and I cannot wait to see what they are coming up with next. What's Up Beauty is such an underrated brand for some reason, I don't know why, but I feel like, you know, this palette deserves all the love it can get. Super special, I enjoy it a lot. So you guys, what do you think is my favorite palette of the year? Uh, this really kind of was unexpected because when I received this, I never thought I would end up loving the palette as much as I actually do. But once I had it in my hands, I was like, oh no, this might just be my favorite color story ever. And I just have to give it to Gourmand Girls Nightshade Palette. I don't even know what to say, you guys. This is like exactly what I love in a color story. This has grace. This has depth. This has some bright, beautiful, pastel shades. It has purple, periwinkle, different textures, and the formula is top-notch. And the amount of times that I have used this palette and I still can come up with new combinations, new color combinations, is incredible. I mean, one of my all-time favorite shimmer shades of all time, honestly, it's the shade Night Fairy. This is so beautiful. But then I also love this, and I love this pop of green in here. I just think this is such a beautiful, elegant color story and formula. In my humble opinion, this is the most stunning color story that was released last year. Again, I keep on forgetting to mention this, but this is also a collaboration with Doodles by The Bunny, and I think this is top notch. It is top, top, top notch, and I think this is so much fun. I just truly, honestly think this is my personal favorite palette in terms of formula, in terms of the color story, in terms of just, you know, my creativity, this sparks joy in me. And that's why I had to give this to number one. It was also kind of a no-brainer. I almost like knew immediately, like intuitively, I knew I wanted to give this number one spot because I love it. But all right, you guys, this was my roundup ranking for 2023. Honestly, I cannot wait to actually try out the palettes that were left behind that I still have to try out. So please just stay tuned on here because I am going to be including them in a ranking coming up very, very soon. And I'm also going to be posting looks on my shorts tab. But yeah, if you did enjoy this ranking, please do not forget to give it a like. Hit the subscribe button if you came this far into the video. And also don't forget to ring the bell in order to stay notified about my upcoming uploads. And also please don't forget to let me know what was your favorite eyeshadow palette of 2023. But all right, until next time, please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.